Hi everyone, welcome to Heavenly Harvest Homestead. My name is Ken, and today we're making spaghetti sauce. So, let's roll. <laughs> production this year and I grew uh, about 40 pounds so far of Roman tomatoes so I'm going to be processing today for my spaghetti sauce that I make and I'm going to show you guys how I do it so right now I've got the some tomatoes I had to put in the freezer um, got to get them thawed out so we can get them peeled and then we're going to uh, show you how to make the the sauce with the seasonings and whatnot. Um, I it's a family recipe that I've well I can't really say a family recipe because I'm the one who made it. But uh, I'm gonna I'll give you some tips on how to make a good tasting spaghetti sauce that doesn't taste too overpowering with acidy tomatoes. So let me uh, put you on, let me show you where where we're at on this uh, uh, tomato. Uh, melting process. Alright, so what I've done so far is I've got my I got uh, bags of tomatoes into my water here. I just need to thaw them out a little bit so I can well I actually need to thaw them out and I took a tip from Jess uh, Roots and Refuge about cutting an X into the bottom of my tomatoes before I freeze them uh, to make it easier to peel. So um, this will be the first time I've done this as far as peeling tomatoes this way, um, you know, I've hassled with peel on tomatoes before uh, using different techniques. So I'm still in the learning process, but hopefully this will uh, yield a much easier uh, peeling tomatoes. You see I've got uh, four more bags over here that I couldn't get into the water. Uh, so I'm just going to leave them right here until we can get these thawed and then I'm going to move them to a bowl to uh, start processing. Now I do have a small food meal that I've used I used last year but I like a little bit of chunkiness in my tomato sauce. Um, I don't like it to be real runny and that's the problem with the food meal is it makes it very thin. It's great for salsa but not so much for, uh, for spaghetti sauce because I like a little bit of uh, chunky tomatoes in there to get a little bit of bite. So let me uh, <clears throat> get this stuff boiling and we'll be back with you in just a second. All right, so while we're waiting for the tomatoes to do their thing, I figured it's a good time to go ahead and get the onions and the garlic prepared. All right, I use uh, sweet Fidelia onions when I can get them, um, but you can usually find sweet onions just about year round. Um, if you don't like sweet onions, you can also use the regular onions, the yellow onions. I've used that before, but my family prefers the sweeter onions. Alright, so I'm not going to bore you with chopping a whole bunch of onions, but I want to show you a method in case you don't, you've never really done this before, of how to do an onion. Alright, so I'm going to take the tops off. And peel it back as you put, as you come off of that, and it'll peel the peel the skin back. Now I've got, you know, some people get worried. Oh, you're wasting a lot of onion. Well, not really. I'm just getting this skin off. All right. So now the, I've got all the skin off. Now chop your onion in half, and now take your onion and hands in the way and we're going to not cut all the way through we're just going to cut a little bit of each through it so it holds itself together all right like this and then when you chop it, it makes it a whole lot easier to chop and you're left with the stump and then I'll usually go ahead and chop it up into its pieces as well all right, and then I've got a bowl here. I'm just going to keep all my. I'm going to go ahead and put all the piece parts 
of the onion into my bowl here because I put my some people do this differently but I put my onions and my garlic in first um, some people do the garlic first but I I prefer to do both of them because they take about equal time and if you put garlic in early and you don't pay attention to it <laughs> you'll lose your garlic and there's nothing worse than burnt garlic because then it's ruined and then you got to start all over again so I'm sure that nobody wants to just start all over again and I think you notice I'm wearing gloves because onions for me it takes forever to get the smell off so I don't know why it's you know some people can just do it and it uh, doesn't even bother them but for some reason onions like to stick to my the onion stank likes to stick to my hand and then it takes forever for me to get them off so you know that's why I decided that's why I wear gloves when I do this um, also it's a lot more sanitary to work with food when you have gloves on so you know, this one's being curmudgeon let me uh, give it another little slice here These guys are going to be an irritation to me. I can see that already. Alright, so in case you're wondering how many onions to use. Alright, so I'm planning on right now, um, let's see, I've got three, six, nine jars right now that are um, ready. So for nine, for usually a quart jar, I usually put one and a half onions per jar. Um, it sound, you know, that's not a lot of onions, and you really think about it. It sounds like a lot, but the flavor of the onion is probably one of the most important parts of a good sauce. You know, second to uh, the garlicky, garlicky flavor. There we go. All right, I'm going to cut one more up for you here. Now you don't have to chop your onions up as fine as I do. You can make them in more chunks if you like. I like it uh, pretty thinly tight because it tends to break down when I put it in with the garlic. Now what I was talking about about the garlic, if you put them in garlic before, it's fine as long as you pay attention. Because garlic will burn very quickly if you don't keep it under wraps. But with the onions, because onions sweat when they get cooked, it creates a little more liquid in there and it prevents, prevents the garlic from taking on a burned you know, thing. But now, that doesn't mean you can just walk away from it and you know, let it do its thing because garlic will still burn no matter what you do if you leave it too long. You know, I'm from Louisiana and it's one of the things uh, you know, I, I talk about garlic but I also, when I talk about garlic, I talk about roux, and that's the base for just about everything we make that involves a soup or a gumbo in Louisiana, and it's a fine art to make roux. Um, it's one of those uh, labors of love. So when I get ready to make my gumbo this year, um, I'm going to show you how to make a proper roux because I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube showing how to make a roux uh, but they don't seem to explain it very well so I'm gonna try to go through the details of how to make a roux but at any rate I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these onions chopped up and I'll catch you back in here in a minute all right so now I got to bust up some garlic and I'll show you I don't use the I don't use the one in the jars, because I've tried it before, it just don't taste the same. So I use fresh garlic. And the way I do the peels is I just take my knife, turn it sideways, give it a little whack. That separates it from its peel. And it sort of smashes it a little bit too, so it makes it a little bit easier to chop up. And it's fun. Take out some frustration. For today. 
All right, so now, go ahead and peel these guys out. Me and Beth are going to be growing some garlic this year, hopefully. We're going to put it in. Uh, well, we put some in in the spring, and according to what everybody tells me, it'll be next spring, it'll be ready to, to harvest. So we use a lot of garlic. You know, I've been accused of, you know, there will be no vampires ever at my house because <laughs> I use so much garlic. So, you know, I guess that's a good thing. Um, garlic is very healthy. Uh, helps with your uh, blood pressure. Uh, helps keep the, the blood flowing. Uh, and if you have heart problems, they say to eat a whole clove of garlic, which is one of these guys, every single day, and it will reverse your ailments. Um, I don't have it. All right, well, my battery died, so I had to go get a new battery. What I was saying is, um, garlic is very healthy. It's, uh, and it's, I like it. I like garlic a lot. Uh, I put it in my, all my uh, things I can, as far as pickles and whatnot. Uh, Beth does primary, uh oh, missed one. <sighs> Beth does primarily, does most of the canning. Uh, in fact, she's headed back. She had to go out to town today. Uh, she just called me and told me she's headed back. So um, I'm probably going to let her do the jars um, for me because still a little bit of green on the jars. <laughs> so um, I'm going to watch her real carefully this time. So in case she's uh, ever out and i got to do some garlic or do, excuse me, do some canning, uh, I, won't be, I won't have to wait for her to get back. All right, so I got me a little pile of garlic. Now, what I like to do is get these other oh, little holes out of the way because these things don't break down. The garlic will break down, but the holes, not so much. And I'm not really a big fan of the uh, garlic holes. It just kind of turns me off when I bite into one. So I'll leave my knife off here. Let me go run this sink right quick. My rinse this knife. So I've already smashed these flat. So what I do is I just start a brief um, rough chop. Just kind of going through it. Just kind of breaking it up into smaller pieces. Going through the pile. Sort of just working through the pile. Not really worried about any uniform pieces. Just trying to get it where it settles down into a little pile. Now, I got me a little pile going. Now, I'm just going to rock my knife back and forth through this. And work it back to a big pile again. And then work back against the other grain. And I do it this way. Um, one thing is it's a whole lot faster than trying to do one at a time, trying to break it down into little pieces. Oh, there's one of them guys trying to jump over here and join us for the... Alright, so now I just scoop it up on my knife blade and put it in my bowl. You know, pretty easy. Come back and collect what you got left. Scoop it up on the knife blade, use it as a little shovel, and put it in the bowl. All right, and you can't see my bowl. I see, I noticed that, but it's in there. I'll show you in just a second. That all the onions and all the garlic are in there. And I did the tomatoes off off screen because I uh, had a little bit of a <laughs> conundrum with the water uh, boiling, so I had to um, do some uh, magic to get that done properly. And, but I will, I do want to report that 
cutting the bottom of the tomatoes is a great way to get the, pro the tomatoes to process. All right, let me pan over here to the, my bowl and I'll show you what I'm talking about, my bowl of onions and stuff. So here's my bowl, in, uh, bowl of onions and garlic. All right, now we're going to take this over to the stove and I'm going to go ahead and, whoo, it smells good. I'm going to go ahead and get, get started cooking it up. Okay, now that I got you over here back to the stove, this is the pot I'm going to, I'm just going to saute the onions and the garlic in this pot. So what I start with is a little bit of olive oil. And it doesn't matter whether you have regular olive oil, light oil. Um, we use both. Um, I prefer when I'm doing pastries and things like that to use the extra light. But for this particular purpose, I use about two tablespoons of, of olive oil. You don't need a whole lot because, like I said, the, tomato, the, the onions are going to sweat and give you plenty of... Uh, liquid to cook in and while this is heating up I'll show you what we got for tomatoes this pot a pot of tomatoes here so process pretty good uh, you know there's a few seeds in here and that's one of the things with the food meal it'll take the seeds out too because uh, we didn't just do paste tomatoes this time I actually did uh, cherry tomatoes and a couple of my um, slicer tomatoes that were going out and uh, getting them ready. Right, so I put my stove, my, my eye to about a six right now just to heat the oil up. And I'm going to turn it back down. Once I put the garlic and the onions in, I'm going to turn it down to about a four just to uh, keep everything in place so I don't overcook the garlic. Because remember, I was telling you if you overcook the garlic, you know, no bueno. And you definitely don't want to do it this way because. You'll end up ruining your onions too in the process. Then you got to start all over again. So yeah, we don't want to do that. We want to get this done nice and clean. And I've been doing this for several years now, so I never have made a mistake with this. Uh, well, I don't I never anymore. I had made a mistake with this before. Right, so my garlic is, I mean, my oil is heating up there, it's starting to sizzle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this stuff in here. So much for putting gloves on to keep the, the onion stink off of my hand. Now I'm sticking my hand into the onion bowl to scrape the onions out. Alright, so we're going to let that simmer for just a few minutes and then I'm going to turn the heat down. Get me a spoon here. I'm going to turn this over. What you don't want is the garlic sitting directly on the bottom of the pot because it will scorch. Now you notice some of the onions, they aren't exactly the same uniform size. I, I chop them coarsely uh, because they will soften up and they will break down by themselves. But I like a little bit of a bite on my onion when I eat spaghetti anyway. So you know, that's you know, just my preference. Uh, right, so we're going to saute these up and I'll get back with you as soon as they get soft. Alright, now I've got my onions are soft and smelling good. So here's one of my secrets. Um, Alright, so over here I've got my litany of spices. I use basil, parsley, oregano. I ran out of marjam, so can't put it in the sauce. Um, fennel seed and bay leaves. Now this is one of my secrets is fennel seed. Not a lot of people use this. But you will find this in about every Italian restaurant uh, in the sauce. Um, that's where I picked it up at when I was uh, overseas in Italy. Uh, I, we were, we went on a, I was on a, uh, a LHA. And we did a, uh, we stopped at uh, ports in France and then Italy. And I went to have some of the local cuisine and I talked to one of the chefs there that spoke English and this is what he told me his secret was so I carried it back to here and that's my secret now the other secret is I don't wait I don't put my spices in last I always put them in first with my onions give these another quick stir 
All right, so we're going to start with basil. All right, and I use the old measuring spoon that God gave us in your hand. All right, so the if you fill it to the pit of your hand up, that's a tablespoon. The smaller your hand is a teaspoon. All right, and it's rough measurements, I know, but I don't do any exact measurements because we always cook to taste. All right. Roughly four tablespoons of basil to start with. Now I'm going to add more later on down the road. Actually, I'm going to add more right now. Um, this is our basil from our garden, and I'm going to put some of this in there as well. Uh, I processed this the other day. We dried it and processed it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of this in there too. Parsley. Right, parsley is one of those things because it's so big, it takes a lot of it to get some good flavor. But I use about the same amount. I use four tablespoons of parsley to start with. One, two, three, four. Now, with one of the what's this called? This is called the aromatics and. If you know what aromatics are, you'll know why, because it makes the you know, kitchen smell awesome. All right, oregano. I don't do a whole lot of oregano from the beginning. I only put two tablespoons of oregano into this. Now, these measurements are specifically for this recipe to make nine quarts of sauce. So, depending on what you're doing, uh, how much you're doing, then you need to temper it. All right, and I'm going to add only a teaspoon of fennel seed because a little bit does a, goes a long way. Um, actually, I'm going to add two teaspoons. All right, now, give us a stir in here. Get this all mixed up. Get all this working together. Once again, I wish I had smell of vision because this smells unbelievable. I love the smell of fresh onions and garlic with herbs in it. Just makes a, you know, just makes, I think it makes up the majority of the, of the taste of all your food is all these different things in here. All right, so now I've got that all mixed in. Now I'm going to move this off the eye and I'm going to put my tomatoes on here and we're going to add this to the tomatoes. Alright, so this is what it looks like. Nice and, nice and pretty. We'll go ahead and incorporate that into our tomatoes. Stir this in. Get these tomatoes working. Well incorporated. Don't leave the onions are sitting on the top. Get them all stirred down into your tomatoes. And where you see a, a good mixture, so when you pull it up, you get tomatoes and onions all at the same time. All right now, I need to add some salt. So I use kosher salt for this particular one because it adds, uh, you don't have to put quite as much. You don't have to sit here and shake, shake, shake. 
So what I do is, for this particular, for my regular sauce, when I make it for the family, I use three pinches. So that's about a quart. So here I'm doing nine quarts, so I'm going to do 18 pinches. Sounds like a lot, but, you know, the salt goes, a, you know, gets sucked up by these tomatoes, right? Let me stir these in, turn my heat up, put my lid on, get these up to a boil, well, or to a simmer. They start bubbling, and then start stirring them in. Got some whole tomatoes still in here. Then, like I said, I did that on purpose to get me a very chunky sauce. These will, as they cook down, they'll break down a little bit more, but it does add some chunks to your sauce and makes the sauce, I think, sticks to the noodles a little bit better. Alright, so let me get this all simmered up and I'll get you to the next pot where we add the... Actually, let me do this. I need to go ahead and add the bay leaves. Now, bay leaves are a taste thing. Some people don't use them. I like to use it because it adds that extra little bit of zest and a little bit of my heritage from Louisiana back into the back in the mix because we use bay leaves nearly for everything. All right, so bay leaves. I'm going to put for the beginning uh, about ten bay leaves in here. Ten bay leaves, and I'm going to go ahead and stir them down in the sauce. You want those completely covered, All right? You don't want them sticking out of the out of the top of it or sitting on the top. They won't do a thing sitting on the top of your tomatoes. So stir them down inside, so they can do their magic inside the sauce. All right. Now let me get that doing this thing, and I will get back to you. All right, I'm back with you. I'm about to finish off this sauce. So the last thing I add after I get it, I've uh, run it for about an hour, letting all the good flavors meld. I add mushrooms. Um, I use sliced mushrooms. Um, when I can, I'll get whole mushrooms and slice them up myself and saute them with the with the onions, but we didn't get any this year, so I have to use the canned ones. Now drain these off because I don't want a whole bunch of extra water in here because the tomatoes watered enough. There's not a lot of juice in here, but... And for a batch this size, two of these big jars, this is a uh, six ounce jar, so about 12 ounces of Mushrooms will be just fine. Um, our family doesn't like them so much. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, they like them, but it's not like a they love mushrooms. So I don't put a whole lot in there, just enough to kind of get a taste every now and again. Now, if you like mushrooms. For a size of this, I'd probably add three of these because that'll give you a significant amount of mushrooms in here. Let me stir this in. And because these mushrooms are already cooked, I don't need to run them for more than maybe 20 minutes just to let them melt into all this everything as well. Because once we put it in a jar, we're going to have plenty of time to become good friends. So. Just wanted to show you that last step. That's one of my last things I do before I uh, close up uh, and get ready to can it up. But let me uh, take a taste test here and see if sure I don't need to add anything else. more salt. Remember I told you I put a, a lot of salt in here. Well I only put 
about three quarters of what I normally put, so I'm going to go ahead and add the last seven. Now for a normal batch, just for one quart, or just a normal batch, I only put three pinches in there. Stir that in. But the flavor is amazing. Try this one more time, see how this comes out. Perfect. Yeah, that did a trick. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm working on my jars right now. Once I get them done, we'll uh, get back on here and I'll show you how to can them up and then put them in the water bath. All right, now it's time to jar it up. Get my lids. as possible. And you want to leave about half an inch of headspace on this sauce. Give enough time to expand because it will it will still expand even though it's really really done. Uh -oh. A little bit out of that one. Cup runneth over. <laughs> and I believe the bay leaves in as well. Um, you can take them out if you want, but it's just, you know, we have a little thing with our family that whoever gets the bay leaf in their sauce does the dishes. So, you know, it's one of the things we, I leave them in there just for, you know, it's kind of a little game. It's kind of nice. You know, I don't know, you might think it's kind of cruel, but, you know, it's all really depending on who's doing the serving. More likely than not. My grandson just come in looking for his brother, so apologize if they disturbed you. <laughs> They're out there playing. So nice having them around. They uh, definitely make it exciting. You know, because all of our all of our children are grown. You know, we have uh, four grandsons. Uh, this, that's one of the twins. He's looking for his twin brother. Apparently he's in there watching TV. I'm supposed to be out there playing cops and robbers or something with him. So goes the other grandson. <laughs> this is going to go take out our turkeys. You know, last night we uh, lost one of, another one of our female turkeys. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, I was reading on a, a post today or on a website that you know, turkeys are really hard to grow. So, you know, I just uh, you know, had to uh, put it away and 
All right, so that's basically how you do it. You just, <laughs> you know, just, uh, just keep dishing it in, filling the jars up. You know, nothing really exciting. You know, for you that you guys that already know how to can, I guess is probably pretty boring to you, but some of the people out here don't know how to can. You know, including myself, I'm still in the learning stages, so if, I, if I'm not doing something wrong, you know, please put in the comments down there what, you know, any suggestions or anything that you want to suggest. Because I, by far, am no expert at this. this on pause for a minute and then I'll uh, get back to you as soon as we get done uh, filling the jars show you how to do the can the water bath all right I got the jars in there I need to put some more water in there so it covers up the whole entire top like that. Alright, so where we live, we live in the eastern part of North Carolina. So uh, once it's come up to boil, we need to process it for about 10 minutes and then take it out and listen to the, which is the greatest sound in the world, means you got good seals. Alright, we got it boiling, so I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. Like I said, we're going to process this for 10 minutes. I'm going to set my timer. I'm going to take it out and just set it on a, on a towel and let it rock. Alright, so now you saw how many jars were in there. Five jars. I had a total of six and actually six and three quarters. But in the midst of all this, my family told me that it smelled too good for the, just to can up. So we're having spaghetti tonight. So we're putting up five jars, and that will be good for a little while. I need to put some more up because we eat spaghetti pretty often, and other people ask for it. So I just want to tell you thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Ring your notif <coughs> notification bell so you can see when we put new videos up. And again, God is great all the time, and all the time God is good. God bless. Love you.